So in this video, I am going to talk about diptychs. So what are diptychs? Well, they are two pieces of art, you know, two photos or two paintings or anything else that work better together than they do apart. They work together to form one single artistic statement or they show a very strong relationship between the two subjects. So in this diptych, we have, it is the same location, but we have a shift in scale, um, but we have some very nice continuation here. So the uh, horizon line uh, lines up here, and we also have the back of this chair or whatever it is, um, continuing on into the other picture. In this uh, diptych, uh, it works in a different kind of way. It has to do with composition. So this artist decided to put these two together, these two images. They both have the same composition. They both have two focal points right here and right here, same with here and here, um, as the main parts of the photos. And because the artist put these together, instead of you know having one picture work by itself and the other picture work by itself, we, the viewers, start looking at the images and thinking, well, why did the artist put them together? Is there something about this up arrow that has to do with the way her hand is being held? Is there something with this um, no entry sign that has to do with this hand? You know, what does this have to do? What is the situation? And so diptychs are really nice because they kind of make the viewer work and make the viewer more engaged. So again, these two images have the same composition. Things are laid out in the picture in the same way. So that's definitely a way that you can make a diptych. You can also use continuation. So we have the Ferris wheel up here, and then going along with that uh, radial composition, we have the legs coming out, right? Or in the next picture, we have these girls standing here, but then the continuation shows the um, trees coming out almost like it's their heads, right, out of their bodies. And I have some even better examples of continuation in a little bit. We also might put two images together because of similarity. We have these very tall and thin vertical lines here, and we have the same here. So when we put them together, again, the similarity, it makes the viewer work. Like, well, why are these together? Oh, there's similarity. There's, you know, this, there's that. Um, and it's much more engaging to the viewer. Or they might be put together to tell a narrative story. So we have these little blackberries, and then we see these two feet, um, or you know, these two different people, and a bowl of blackberries, and it kind of tells a story. It was a beautiful summer day, and they went out and they collected these blackberries. So those are kind of four different ways that we can combine images together to form a diptych. There are other ways as well, but those are four main ways. Keith Sharp is really good at doing similarities. So we have the shingles here and then the scales and the fish. We have the little point at the top of the fish, just like we do in the roof. And, you know, maybe as the viewer, we're like, oh, this vent and the eye, maybe the window and either the gills or the fin. Here we have a duplex and then we have twins. So maybe the duplex, you know, that's two halves of a whole, right? But what are identical twins? They have the same DNA. So they're kind of two parts of one thing as well. So just like the two parts of the house as a whole are different from each other, so are twins. You know, they have the same DNA, but they are two different people. So it's only because these are together that we start making those connections and having those thoughts. This has to do with composition. So having the legs of the dog in the snow and having the tree trunks in the snow. We have the flower and the satellite dish. Again, that's similarity. And here we have similarity and similarity and composition really. And here we have the same kind of theme. I like how one is close, one is far away, but the plaid in the baseball is kind of very similar to the um, way that the field was um, mowed. So these are those examples of the continuation. So this guy is on Instagram, post great work. And you can see he takes one photo, he takes another photo, he combines them together. Um, he really lines them up and makes them work. 
And this one's a little creepy, I feel like, but it's really interesting and done well. This one's even more creepy to me, but I really like it. And it was very smart the way it was put together. You know, he does very, very good work. So this is another approach. Uh, this is a woman, I believe she teaches yoga. She lives in Israel and uh she's got this dog and so she takes all these pictures where she combines herself with her dog and these are some examples of my former students so i really love how these two they're of similar things but how the student made them line up right here in the middle you've got that great continuation you have um on top of that same composition and we have even kind of the different kinds of weather in there. It's just interesting to look at. These are both images that have to do with, you know, luxury and femininity. Uh, this won some awards. And I think what really makes this work, um, of course, the fingers and the roots are very similar to each other. But I love the green ring really pulls us into the moss and vice versa, and it helps to unify these two images. Uh, the diagonal that started here and continues onto this image works really well. These are some of that continuation, so the cracks in the sidewalk with the vines on the wall and the trees going into the dog's legs. Uh, this tells a little story, so that's that little narrative story. I believe, actually, they were taken at two different times. I'm not trying to ruin it for you, but the artist put them together to make it seem like they tell a story. And then both with this diptych and this diptych, you know, we start looking at them. Why is this girl in a torn shirt? Why is she alone in the middle of a field? Why is this broken? And we start um, creating a narrative in our heads. This is just more visual, but it works very well, I think, the way it's laid out. These are the shadows and the lines. You almost, when you first look at it, think it's one photo. So what your assignment is going to be is to create a diptych or a triptych. So a triptych would be three images that work together, um, where the images interact with each other in a way that makes them say something more than if they were alone. If you have any questions, please let me know.